Welcome to WO50, Women Over 50 in Body Wisdom and Wellness. Hello, my name is Corinne and I'm here with my BFF, Eddie. And today we're talking about the measuring what matters, success beyond the bottom line. Yeah, we talked about the variable ways to measure success. Different for everybody, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, everybody's different. And we ask you to inquire what is success to you. And we share what success to each of us. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll be surprised. It is. And it's not just the attainment of wealth and fame and fortune and, and, and credibility. It has many other uh, measurements. And you'll learn about grit and what that means. And there's a few aha moments in there too. So, you know, listen in. It's mm -hmm. a good one. Enjoy it. Hello. Hello. How are you? <laughs> I'm good. Yeah, good. I'm get, getting ready for the Alea retreat this weekend. Very, very excited. Um, ooh, and we get to interview her soon. Yeah. We'll be interviewing uh, her in two weeks, I think. Yeah. And then we'll probably wait. post it later in June, I would imagine, maybe early mm -hmm. July. Yeah. So that'll be Exciting. a good one coming up. Uh huh. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, she's always such a beautiful energy to be around as yours is as well. So it's like, like yumminess for everybody. Yeah. 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 When I asked her to do, if she would do it, cause she really doesn't do interviews, podcasts, um, you know, not that she's against it. She just isn't like a promotion person or a, you know, she just is existing and, mm -hmm. and, um, it, and so anyways, I said, will you do the, I told her a little bit about it, you know, women over 50 and body wisdom and wellness. Because she goes, well, I'm a woman and I'm over 50. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think she likes hanging out with us. <laughs> she does. We all... She laughs and has fun, I think. Yeah. 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 It'll be fun to see like which direction it goes in. You know, I, you know what I think? Yeah. I think it'll be really successful. <laughs> 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 Again, stretching it a little bit, but you know, I'll go with it. I'll okay. go with it because okay. our topic today is indeed measuring what matters, success beyond the bottom line. Yeah, it's a yeah. good one. Yeah, yeah, it got me thinking too cuz you know when we when we ask somebody what success is, like, you know, what is success to you? What is success to you? What everybody's got a different uh, meaning. Mm -hmm. You know, what what does success mean to you? Success for me has, I think, always been happiness and inner peace. Like always. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's always been the most important thing to me and always what success has been. So to me, I have been successful for a long time <laughs> with yeah. those terms. You're even really though... successful at, at that <laughs> inner peace and and meditation those are really someone else who's not so successful at meditation right they're like oh i keep trying and trying and trying i am just not succeeding but what okay what do you succeed at then <laughs> yeah yeah well I my i remember years ago that i and i i don't like i think that you know, every time we have a, a, a strong perspective or or a you know a strong like value system in our life we we assume usually that everybody is like that or you know because we're you know live a, a very self-contained world most of us and and we think that a, a, mo it, most people think like us which is kind of the opposite of what it is most people don't think like we do yeah. it, we're also very very different and so i remember my brother saying something to me years ago about me being the only person in the family that wasn't successful and i was like what what, what are you talking about like i have an orphanage in, in india I have a, you know, the Ivy house, I've, you know, I've all, all this stuff. And he, and he goes, yeah, but you don't own your own home. And I'm like, uh. um, okay. Is that what success is to you? He goes, yeah, pretty much. That's the American dream. You know, even though he's Canadian is to own your own <laughs> home. And it didn't change my view. I still, you know, cause there, there are people who don't own their own homes and, and it's mm -hmm. not necessarily the best investment. And, um, and so then, and I was talking to another friend actually more recently, and she's has one more year in her thirties. And so that's what she was saying leading up to her birthday last week. She's like, I have one more year in my thirties. And I said, well, how does that feel? And she goes, well, um, I just feel like 
I should be somewhere different than I am. And I'm like, mm-hmm. well, what does success mean to you? And she goes, well, I just feel like by now I should have, you know, had more money in the bank and maybe own my own home. And, and, and then I told her the story of what my brother had said. And she goes, you know, that's so interesting because it's really culturally what I feel we're supposed to have. But she said, mm-hmm. in, in actual fact, I have traveled around the world. I've done all these amazing things and I have so much freedom in my life. I'm doing what I love. And that really is success to me. Yeah. And so then she turned it all around and then didn't mind that it's her last year in her 30s. Because she is successful on her terms, but she had to inquire, which we talk about all the time, inquire within to get that answer that that the that the all the things she thought she should be were what society she was buying into, but it really wasn't what she believed. Yeah, it's a lot of conditioning, isn't it? A lot of the belief systems that that's laid on us early in life, we kind of carry through till we, you know, and live with them until we don't. Mm-hmm. You know, we look at. A lot of people measure success by wealth, by fame, by, you know, how much they've collected, what's in their bank. And, um, you know, I know I always looked at success as just how effective you are. You know, mm. what, you know, when you're when you're in your work and you're, um, you know, and you feel like you've really had a good day and you got through to some people and they're changing their lives and they're, you know, coming back and they're like, you know, you've been a part of their lives and they go, thanks for telling me some of this stuff because now I've put it into action and I've changed this and this and I've become a better person because of this. That's successful to me. That, Mm -hmm. that means, I don't know, that speaks more volumes than like someone saying, well, you should have charged more for that because then you'd have more money. And then, Mm -hmm. you know, you're, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, Mm -hmm. it's a, Mm-hmm. then you mustn't be, you mustn't be very good at what you do because you drive that kind of car and you don't have a big mansion. And, mm-hmm. you know, and I talk about this now with my grandkids too, like what, what does being successful mean to them? Because the little guy, you know, he's nine and he's wanting to be a basketball player and wearing his gold chains and, you know, he wants to be successful. He wants to I be said, a black basketball player, I believe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I said, he does. And I'm like, and he's inspired by, by, you know, all, and I have him in basketball and he's in baseball and he's in soccer because he wants to do all these sports and he'll figure it out for himself. And he'll, I said, you'll realize that you're going to feel good, really good doing one of these sports. And that's the one you might stick with. And that's the one you may have a lot of success or you might not, you know, and, and then, then you may make a lot of money and you may not, but it shouldn't measure the character of, of who you are. Mm hmm. You know, because you're making friends in this, you're, you know, you're connecting with people. That's success too. Right, right, right. So success is finding joy in whatever you're doing. Like I remember when I um, first started, when I was in Nashville, you know, I mentioned before I was an illegal alien because I'm a a Canadian. I've got two passports now, but, but when I was first here, I did not have a green card yet. And so I had ways around that I figured out how to work. And so I, while I was waiting for a writing deal to come through, um, they were trying to figure out the contract to to write for BMG. I, and I'd never, like I had sang my whole life for, Mm -hmm. for a living. And so when I came to Nashville, I couldn't make a living singing anymore. It was, you know, because in Canada, we get paid lots of money to sing in the clubs, but not Nashville, like the last thing you have to (laughs) pay to play here practically. And so I would decided you know, it was my first and only waitressing job. And so I, um, I remember when I got the job, I was so proud that I'd gotten the job because I'd never waited tables before. And I remember I, it was at this place that's no longer in Nashville. It was on White Bridge Road called Calhoun's and it was a rib restaurant. It was before I was a vegetarian. And, um, (laughs) and I remember thinking I, I loved it. Now I, I was a waitress for about eight months and that was right at the time when the eight months was coming to an end and my writing deal came through was just about the time I was getting sick of it and I was not enjoying it anymore. But I really loved it those first eight months because it was so different than anything I'd ever done before. And my feeling was, I'm going to do this 
just like it was like my only job for the rest of my life. Like the people matter, the people I work with matter, the people I wait on matter. I have integrity. I'm on time. And to me, that attitude is a successful attitude. And it was the same thing when I, when I had my house cleaning business, which my mother and sister laughed hysterically because I was quite the slob when I was younger. And then all of a sudden I was cleaning houses in Nashville before the waitressing job. And, um, and I took pride in that too. And I wanted to do that really well as well. And so, yeah, that success is how you approach something and that you bring all of the best of yourself. And you'd think that that's a duh, but there's so many people that don't do that. Well, and you know what? I heard this term, um, thrown at me the other day when I had mentioned to, to my partner Strat, I said, you know, we we were, we're going to talk about success. And he said, Oh, he said, I just watched a Ted talk about success. What, what's the predictor, the greatest predictor of success. And he said, and they said a word and it's you. And now when I say this word to you, Corinne, when you were talking about that and the house cleaning business and, and, I remember when I met you, I right where I was just new to Nashville as well back in the night, early nineties. And I waiting for my nursing papers to get approved and come in. I actually, you know, hooked my leash on to Corinne and we, here we are cleaning houses. And this is the term I'm going to link to it because I truly feel what two of us have. And this is what Strat said. He said, you, the biggest predictor of success is when someone has grit, grit. And when he said that, I was like, oh my God, honey, that's the biggest compliment then, you know, and then I've heard like in ages, this is great. And when I hear you talking like that, you know, we had such grit in that early days of, we wanted to write music and we wanted to be successful and we, oh, we didn't care what it took. We just put the, you know, our little little feet to the pavement and, and we, uh, and our little brushes to the toilets and we cleaned and we were great cleaners too. (laughs) Everyone hated when we got really successful because then they were like, we're losing our housekeepers. Right. That's right. That's right. (laughs) But grit is that perseverance that, you know, that, that not giving up that, that continual, your drive is there. Your focus is there. You're just this passion for life and, you know, and it's not a hustle. It's not a hustle because mm-hmm. it's it's grit. It's knowing there's something within you that 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 just drives you, mm-hmm. right? It's and beautiful. I would, it's beautiful. That's a beautiful word. I would use. I've always used the word um, uh, determination. Like I'm incredibly determined. You know, yeah. and that would be the same thing as grit, right? Yep. Yeah. Grit. Well, grit. I had to look up really what grit truly meant. Yeah. And grit is a trait of perseverance and resilience in pursuing long-term goals, despite adversities, setback, Mm -hmm. failure, and it involves maintaining passion and effort over time and is often the key predictor of success. Wow. The key predictor. And this gal said this, when I watched the Ted talk, she said, um, yeah, she listed the people that, you know, football players and the kids that came from money or no money or the kid that made it was the one with the grit. Yeah. You know, and that that's a measurement tool now, the predictor of success that they're using in a lot of these universities. So, yeah. yeah we did have it. We did we have did. it. We did. We did. And it's like when you look back and go, what is that? When you watch kids that are out there and they're, my goodness, they're in the rain and the snow and they're still out there kicking that soccer ball around or, you know, it's the same with meditating too. Like you're sitting there and you really want to be really good at it. <laughs> you want to, <laughs> <you, laughs> it's like, I want to sit there and it, yeah. It's yeah. It's, I mean, it. yeah. Perseverance some things you don't meditation. need grit for. <laughs> yeah. Well, it does take perseverance for meditation, you know, and, but- and you'll fail and you'll have a setback because a thought comes in, right? Well, I wouldn't call that failure. <laughs> <laughs> you know me. Um, yeah, I would call that it, it, it perseverance, but it's, and it's also what you learn eventually in meditation. Yeah. Even though this is a little off topic, but um, always something I love mentioning is that you, you're allowing everything to be as it is. 
So you're just allowing, you know, your thoughts to come and go. So you start, you stop judging. So it's like when you're fighting, it's cut. Cause I do feel that grit is it, it like, so you're, you are sort of fighting in life a little bit. Like you're, you're fighting for yourself sort of thing. Like that's the feeling I got when I was young is it was like, I was fighting for myself and hanging on and, and persevering through things and had this grit. And mm. I feel like as we get older, we, we learn to release that grip a little bit and allow life to unfold. You still have a focus, but not with as much gripping. Right. And so that's yeah. what meditation taught me. Is yeah. And to, I, yeah. I don't, yeah, I don't find it's as much as a, a fighting to hold on. I don't know if the word fighting works for, for, for me in that kind of grip. Like when I look back and kind of watch the layout of the land for me, um, you know, it's more, I don't know, the word drive or passion or mm -hmm. something. And it could be like, that's how I can think of it now. Right. But that. But don't, what, what's the difference between how you were when you first got to Nashville mm -hmm. and then when you found holistic medicine, what's the difference in the way you approached it? Oh, there's a much softness. There's a softer. That's uh, where I'm getting to. Yeah. Yeah. So what is that? Where it's not fighting, it's softer. There's not war, there's peace. Where's that? Like, that's kind of. Yeah. Well, for me, it was definitely a fight. It was definitely yeah. a fight. Like, I feel like, mm -hmm. um, you know, perseverance and grit was, was, and I was fighting for myself what I thought that I wanted. And yeah. then I realized that I didn't want it anymore. And then I, it softened and then I went more, went with the flow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's but it was still, it? yeah, it is. It's it still is. success. It's, yeah. It still makes you think like, that's why yeah. we do this. Cause we dig, we, we poke at each other and we dig and we, we kind of go like to help each other. Well, I love it because I go, okay, I'm going to dig a little deeper on that one now. That's mm -hmm. really good because, you know, 10, 20 years from now, we might not even like the word grit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, I think it, it it's, it's almost re required when you're young because there's, there's so many choices and so many ways to go. And I think you learn that some of us learn that that's the way, but then, then for me, I just got tired of the fight, the grit, the perseverance. I got tired of it after a while of, of like feeling like I was hitting my head against a brick wall yeah. and I wanted, I wanted more ease and, and I still had passion for things, but I just wanted more ease in my life. And then when I found meditation and I learned to sit in meditation and I learned how the more I allowed everything to be as it is and more, the less expectations I had, the more I softened, the more yeah. life just unfolded like a beautiful flower. You, you know, you know, it. You what you just said um, kind of reminds me of what Oprah said one time on one of her soul series, you know, Super the Soul Sundays, Super yeah. Soul Sunday. And she said, um, gosh, it's coming in. It's not what I don't know how she worded it, but it's not what you accomplish or what you collect or what you it, uh, the accolades. It's actually your life is my life is measured. The success of my life is measured by what I've inspired others to do. Mm. Which is similar to what you said. Yeah. 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 So that, that that's coming in from super soul Sunday, you know, me and how my brain operates. And when you just said that, I went, yeah, the softening of, yeah. 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 It's, to, that's and there's success. nothing. Yeah. And there's nothing yeah. wrong with that. I feel like the grit is part of, a stage that we went through that was a beautiful part. Mm -hmm. And then it sort of transformed into something else. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's softer. Mm -hmm. And I would say, yeah. yes, we were successful back then because we were living our dreams and came to Nashville and, you know, we were doing it. So that was successful. We were living our dream, mm -hmm. basically. I mean, I, I did, you know, I mentioned there was fight, but there was also a, a hell of a lot of good times too. Yes, you know? there was. <laughs> Absolutely. Beautiful memories and experiences and the people we met and yeah, you know, and, and still keep in touch with and mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Oh yeah. It's interesting. It's interesting how we, we measure, we measure success in life. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and it's really within yourself. It's, it's defined within yourself. Yeah. And that's what what your values are. And yeah. Yeah. That's what I think is good to notice. That's the inquiry. That's good is, is what, you know, we've talked about before on the podcast, what is your value? What do you value? What is most important thing to you? And now we're talking about what is success to you. So, and it, you know, we talked about intentions, you mm-hmm. know, and, and so now what is success to you and, and to realize that it is different for everybody and whatever it is for you is perfectly fine. We're not saying that it needs to be like what we're talking about. Yeah. It's just whatever success is for you. And, um, and are you sort of living from that? And do you feel success or, you know, like my friend that I had that talk with that she was feeling a little unnerved about having her last year in her thirties be where she's at. And then after doing a little bit of inquiry, realizing she really was successful. And sometimes that's what it takes for each of us is to look at what, what is it is for us? Like what, and cause our parents are, will have affected us. Like what success? Cause mm-hmm. I know for me, my dad and my brother were very similar that success. My, for my dad was success financially, which is in a whole nother can of worms because even how much money somebody has is an, a different amount. Everybody has a different amount. And some people don't even know what their financial comfortability is. Yeah. You know, how much actually is yeah. it? You know, yeah. that's a, that's a, that's a question too. How much is and enough for you to and feel comfortable? Is, yeah. And that's forever changing. Like the attainment of wealth has been around a long time to show and many, many have used it as a measurement stick, you know, for success. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a successful person. Look what they have. Mm-hmm. But yet, how's their relationship? Is that successful? How's their connection with their family, with their kids, with their employees or, you know, life? Yeah. How, what How, kind of person are they? Are they kind? Are they generous? Are they yeah, yeah giving? Yeah. Are they, are they well-rounded people, you know, and that's, yeah. And, and, and that's the inquiry again, like mm-hmm. you said, that's the inquiry you make is, is the, the, the measurement tools I use, is it wealth? Is that one method? And, you know, is that what I want? You know, just mm-hmm. it's inquiry. Is that what measures my success is that is mm-hmm. a collection of stuff? Because we know after 50 and as we get older, you know, a lot of us don't want to be collecting stuff anymore. It's really hard even to get rid of stuff mm-hmm. <laughs> sometimes. But again, it's all within our own selves. Some people it's winning awards, success in acknowledgement, music. Acknowledgement of fame. From other people. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Fame. Right. How, how far up the ladder we go. And some people it's because they got the best berries in town. The strawberries are the best that have grown in the, they won the biggest cucumber award, right? Mm -hmm. Like biggest squash, biggest pumpkin. There's ribbons for it. Mm -hmm. Really? Don't you feel successful so far as a gardener? Because I don't today because (laughs) (laughs) my seedlings aren't even popping out. Yeah. But that's just because that's outside circumstance. You can't, but you got into your, your, um, greenhouse and you did what you could. I did. That's successful. So that is successful. I did. I felt very good. I felt like I accomplished something. The soil is ready. Some of the seeds are in, but you know, I'm in Newfoundland. You're in Nashville. You've had summer for two months now. Yeah. Ours is coming. Yeah. <laughs> and and that's the thing is that, that you know, you just said successful gardening and, and, and successful and accomplishment. I You mentioned accomplishment. So some people, success is equal to accomplishment. Yeah. Right. For, for I would say for many people. Oh, you have balloons going. I, don't, I wonder if picture. that's got recorded as well. That's so funny. There's like balloons. There's thumbs up now that that happens in in yeah in Zoom. I don't know if it gets recorded though. That's so funny for those the balloons of you who are, are watching really the video. Just... Yeah, I don't know how it did that. I don't, don't know if I could do it again. So those of you who are listening in audio will be totally confused right now. Yeah. So um yeah, so accomplishment. So like some people like if they have a lifelong dream or they something they do regularly where they want to go uh, climb Mount Kilimanjaro or Mount Kailash, you know, you know, that's a goal and, uh, and they mm-hmm. will feel successful having accomplished, yeah. you know? So sometimes there's a, a big 
correlation for many people, accomplishment and success is very much correlated. That's something that I have been deconstructing for the past few years because I didn't want, like on a day-to-day basis, I looked at my, why do I have to feel like I've accomplished something to be worthy to be on the planet every day? Because I feel like Mm -hmm. that's what a, a lot of people They feel like I have to accomplish like, you know, walking three kilometers or three miles today, or I have to accomplish, um, you know, whatever it is, they have to feel, to feel worthy. So there's nothing wrong with accomplishing. We all, as humans, we need that, but I don't want my life, my happiness to be based on Mm -hmm. accomplishment, even if it's as small as going on a hike. Yeah. Like, I don't want that correlated. I want to just go on the hike to enjoy it, but not because I need to feel accomplished something Mm -hmm. because I need to feel worthy enough. Does does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Isn't it enough just to be in the world? Yes. Yes. You know, and it doesn't, you don't always have to wake up every day wanting to make a difference. You already are making a difference. Yeah. Just by being being the authentic you. you. Yeah. Did I take the words out of your mouth? Yeah. Those yeah. are it. Oh, that's it. Good. We're on the same page, girlfriend. That's because we've been friends for a very, very long time. We have <laughs> almost 40 years, so it's good. Yeah. It's successful. That's successful. That is too. That's so true. It's a successful friendship because we've navigated yes. challenges and difficulties and joys and yep. rocky roads for both of us in our in our lives yep. separately and in our lives. And li- experiences, together. you know. Yep. Yeah. Going through relationships and, you know, really watching the words, deconstructing the language around failures when when marriages have fa- you know, have failed or yeah have reached their ended. karmic significance yeah. or have ended or no longer there's personal growth, whatever it is we want to put the label we want to put on it. It's just, we we're, we're, you know, success is, oh, this is a good one. Success is a growth mindset. Okay. Explain more. So every time you move through something like I just had a really aha moment in my head that it shifts the mindset of every time, like even saying the word failure towards something, there's a mindset when it shifts that where you say, you know, you know, I just had some personal growth through that. Like it's, it's wasn't a failure. There was a lot of success in that, that just, it just, you know, like, uh, Satya used to say it can end, or you used to say your significance with someone could end in the middle of a sentence. You've said this. Yeah. You're, 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 relationship with so your karm your relationship with someone could could end in the middle of a sentence it's your karmic connection with somebody yeah could end in so, the middle of a sentence yeah so the growth mindset is it's not fixed right nothing's fixed so there's this movement always which is really successful if we don't get stuck in story too long or mm-hmm. spinning and that's inquiry again it all mm-hmm. boils back mm-hmm. down to that yeah that not deep getting- dive Yeah. Not getting stuck in, okay, my marriage ended, so it was a failure. Well, and that's okay to, to say that it, it, because we are motivated by pain. So we can be, and we do learn from failures. It's just that the word failure has a lot of, it's a big stuff around it. Like it, to me, when I think of the word failure is like that there's no growth from it. It's kind yeah. of like you were saying, where that's yeah. just because our society around failure is something that, you know, you don't want. But really, it, Satya, this is about Satyaism. Um, Satya used to say that that all cooking, because he taught cooking, he said, all cooking is a mistake. He said, you, <laughs> you, you can't, you can't, isn't that a Satyaism? It's like, yeah. you can't, every, every recipe that came about was, was a result of somebody's mistake of somebody doing something wrong. And they figured out a new recipe. He used to say, you know, you, you had some, some, uh, you know, you're, you're grinding some flour and, and, and you're putting some water in it and then it fell into the fire and turned into bread or something like that. Right. And so really looking at how you're talking to yourself. And so I never looked at the end of our marriage as a failure ever. Mm -hmm. Um, I looked at it as a very successful marriage because we were very happy for 10 years and we had a very successful divorce because we didn't Mm -hmm. uh, fight we, mm-hmm. um, we just knew that our, our time together as husband and wife had 
come to an end and we still have the orphanage. And so that's very successful marriage and divorce. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and same here, you know, there's always some growing to do from it. That's the growth mindset. That's the thing from failure or from ends or from whatever the language we use or choose to use around closure. Yeah. <laughs> one. Endings. Yeah. Ending closure. There's always a shift. There's always a growth. There's as long as that mindset is there that this yeah. is, you know, I'm not stuck in this. I don't have, someone said to me the other day, there's a, um, there's a beautiful place out here in Newfoundland. It's called Fogo Island. And she said, she goes, but I love that word Fogo. Don't you? And I'm like, oh yeah, well, I do. It's a beautiful word. She goes, yeah, but there's also a new way of it's fear of letting go or fear of getting old. I'm like, Fogo, Folo, what? what? <laughs> it's like fear of getting old, Fogo. Fear of getting, nice. Fogo. Fear of getting old or fear of letting go. Like, or fear they were, just, you yeah. know, moving all these words around. Yeah, yeah. And I just started to laugh. I'm like, well, what's the alternative? You yeah. Got to drop the fear. We got it. We learned from that then. What's, yeah. what's going to be the successes in this then? Yeah. What, what are, what's going to be our growth? from this. Yeah. That's a, that's great, Eddie. The success is growth. Mm -hmm. And that's, I feel like w why we're here is we're constantly expanding. Like, I don't, I, I know this sounds weird, but I don't look at things or I try not to look at things as good or bad. I look at things as different, curious, and mm -hmm. as, as expanding is expansion because you know, it's like you think about your muscles in order yeah. to grow big muscles, they have to break, yeah. right? And it's a little bit of pain involved. And then that's how they get stronger, mm -hmm. you know, is that that sort of breaking down. And so when we have difficulties, we learn from them and then we can be stronger after mm -hmm. that. And lifelong learners live longer. Because when we're, we're honestly, though, when we're growing and learning and expanding, there's, there's, there's less cognitive decline. It just, you know, the brain loves, loves this. Mm -hmm. It loves it. And the negative and the positive, you know, that, that just that feeling, that inquiry that we do, that's, if we can do more of that, and that's going to be beautiful when Alea, you know, talks to us about that and explains in her language. Because she makes me think. So I think every time we listen to somebody or we hear something, it makes us think. And sometimes it doesn't land right away. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes something can seem really vague and go, I don't know what they're talking about. They're like, eh. and then all of a sudden it lands. Mm -hmm. I remember listening to Eckhart Tolle and I'm like, what's he saying? And now I'm like, I have his quote on my wall. <laughs> yeah. In the office, you know. The oh, only yeah. moment we have is not in the past, is not in the present, it's now. And the only true presence. Yeah. Yeah. And I go, so what's true. he talking about? Yeah. Yeah. There it is. Yeah. 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 Get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm, that's so, good stuff. That's, that's good, good stuff. stuff. That, that kind of took a turn even. It, uh, I liked it because we discovered some things we discovered the the whole grit thing and you know that that's what we were when we were young not necessarily now and our measurement of success if Is we just growth. call success growth then it it growth in so many ways right Suc yeah. we could be successful in so many ways mm -hmm. and it sits really good you know in your being it sits softer and mm -hmm. yeah mhm mm yeah good topic ed good one glad we, <laughs> glad we came upon that one we kind of got that one together yeah, yeah. i think we had, were having a conversation last week before we recorded our podcast and we started talking about success and it's like okay next and i forgot when i asked you what are we talking about this week and you came back with and i totally had forgotten until i looked at my notes yeah but that's what we were talking about so like success yeah. Yeah. Well, we appreciate you guys listening. Every person who listens and connects with us, we appreciate it. We love connecting. We love yeah, we talking, do. obviously. And thank you. Every I had a um, couple of people in my office this week that tune in and say they're listening and are loving the conversations. And, and it's really, it really inspires, you know, us to 
talk about all kinds of things and dig deeper and and share and it, that's what it's all about yeah yep. Yep, so absolutely. thanks for listening and and thanks for the feedback and yeah yeah and share it with somebody that you think might need it and i hope wherever you are you're having a beautiful day